face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up guys and welcome of course to another episode of Who Was Really Better and a special thank you of course to my subscriber who suggested this matchup, Icky Sprite. Thank you so much. These two fire wall breakers, both in the Jews and of course Generation 5, actually share a lot of common traits. Not only have they of course a leaping high attack, but also have access to the likes of Flevlet, Superpower, Earthquake, Rock Slide, Stone Edge, and Wild Shard. So they are a plethora of offensive move pools, both in born with these two. Now they differ a little bit between one another, but those are the primary moves we're gonna talk about. And of course what they actually have different in common. So first of all, let's of course look at their stats. You guys will see they share pretty much the same HP stats of 110 and of course and more 105 on their Manitan. Their Manitan are stronger, of course, 140 attack over 133. Uh, then the defenses are actually quite share. Embor is slightly more bulkier with 65 in both defense and special defenses, while of course uh, their Manitan have of course 55 instead. But the special attack is of course where Embor shine a little bit with 100, which actually is surprisingly enough, considered that it's actually one of the strongest uh, fighting special attackers in the game, which, like I said, it's quite surprising considering how these Pokemon are used. But their Manitan does share, of course, in its speed of a 95 base speed, which, of course, Embor only has 65, which clearly are crippling it somewhat. And if we look, of course, to what um, the resistance, of course, are weak to, one could say that while things are, of course, resisted by these two Pokemon and they do have a lot of HP, they do have a pretty bad defensive typing, so even though they actually resist quite a few things, the fire typing and defensive typing is actually really good, they are of course still pretty darn unbulky and quite fragile. So they do share a lot of traits here, of course Embor did not resist Fairy, but at the same time it does resist Dark instead, and since Embor actually is a Finding Fire type, it does lose its weaknesses to Rock, and of course Stealth Rock, which is a major pro for Embor if anything, but do get, of course, two other weaknesses instead of, of course, the Flying and Psychic. Other than that, they do share the Ground Water typing, which makes this Pokemon, of course, a little hard to use and definitely need to be speedier to deal with, of course, bulkier Water types and, of course, Ground types. Other than that, if we look into, of course, their abilities, uh, one could say this about Darmanitan. We will not compare Send Mode. I don't believe it's a viable option for it, even though it is an issue and, of course, making a very, very high special attack Pokemon and quite bulky at that. It's not something we're gonna focus on, but we're gonna focus, of course, Shear Force. Shear Force boosts, of course, the moves that have secondary effects, so of course, Rock Slide and Fire Punch, making Rock Slide the primary move to use with our Manitan. is actually, of course, with Life Orb, which could hurt really, really badly on a lot of Pokemon. Having that said, of course, on the board, we got Blaze and Reckless. Reckless was actually available late Generation 6, which I do believe are a factor for Embor's viability and it's being so statured are you over you you do of course be not able to be fully powered till late in of course that generation. So with that said let's actually talk about of course their damage output because Ember actually are stronger than their Manitan if you take Reckless into account. It has a stronger Flare Blitz, has a stronger Wild Charge and Super Power Cords being stronger due to Stab alone. These are factors the Manitan of course do lack. Having that said, the Manitan has U-Turn. It is a primary scarf, a very good scarf in UU, hell, even in OU to some extent. Uh, it is not hurting as much as it should do, and it's actually, while it has 140 attack, it still is something to be able to actually have a factor for, that it should hit a little bit harder than it really do. But then again, you're forced to run scarf to actually take on relevant Pokemon. Darmanitan has a tougher matchup to deal with, due to, of course, being a different tier. So one has to, of course, compare them both in, of course, UU from the Generation 6 meta, but also look into Generation 7's meta and what they could do that between one another that that one can't do. So the quick rundown is that their Manitan is probably the easier Pokemon to use, mainly due to, of course, being speedier and, of course, having U-turn. You can pivot around, you can do a lot of stuff that Ember cannot. Having that said, Ember has Scald. I think that's a very, very important issue to actually state here. Clearly doesn't help it, but it, you know, it's something for, of course, the, the, the rock type. So we're just having that mentioned because Skull is such a unique move for it to have. But other than that, this hog of a Pokemon actually have a few factors here, which I do believe are actually important to mention. Ember has no weakness to self-rocks, which means that while, of course, Darmanitan can pivot around, Ember 
can take on, of course, hazards. He doesn't have to worry about it and can actually come in on him, soak whatever hits coming without having to worry about that 25, of course, reduction of, of course, his HP. Another that is, of course, its reckless ability and what it does for, of course, its damage output. Because, as stated, our mana tens, of course, with sheer force and uh, life orb rock slide maneuverability, does hurt. It does hurt quite a lot. But you know what also hurts? Reckless head smash, which, of course, Ember gets of all the things, and of course, flare blitz, wild charge. There is a massive damage output coming from, of course, Ember that our mana tens simply can't pull off. And together with, like I said here, actually surviving Stealth Rock not being the biggest of deal due to finding, of course, in its typing, Ember might just be the better overall, and it also comes down to what the damage I put together with Ibis can do. Ember can use Scarf and be kind of fine. Ember can use Choice Ban, and they are actually very, very tough to deal with. Dormanitan with, of course, Scarf is preferred due to it actually has to get out because the matchup does force it much, much easier out due to its, of course, typing. But also, of course, with Choice Ban, it does fall kind of fast. While, of course, Ember has the same kind of issues, it's slightly bulkier to probably pull off another hit like this. And if the Roto actually compared as Wall Breaker, Ember might just be the more important between these two because finding is just that good of offensive typing. They're both a great Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but in this kind of dialogue, Ember has to be considered a better between these two. Because the biggest disadvantage I see with Ember when it comes to these two between one another is because Ember is slower. But Ember, of course, also gets Sucker Punch, which kind of helps it out a little bit. And quite honestly, if that's the only thing that separates them, then Ember is the one that are the superior wall break between these two. And while it just kind of feels like a tie, I do believe simply Ember is the better one in the end. With that said, I don't think it is as black and white as my previous kind of matchup has been, because Darmanitan has its relevance. It, and of course, like I said, U-Turn is a big deal for it, which is a major perk over, of course, the hog that is Ember. But having that said, Ember just has the damage output, and between these two, I do believe that's more preferred. And Reckless, like I said, was not available in kind of actually Generation 6 until very, very late. And I think comparing that in mind would probably make Ember the more, well, important work between these two. But Dermanitan, in my regard, is the easier one to use. It's very, very straightforward. Much like, of course, Lucario and Cobalion, this, of course, the as well. But for my comparison, I prefer Ember because it synergizes better with teams. It has different damage output and it can do other stuff that Darmanitan cannot. I do believe Skull is such a major point to make. It has a viable special attack stat which you are able to use if you so design with Grass Knot, etc. But, of course, with that said, Darmanitan has relevance, and I, if I could do a tie, I probably would do, but if I have to go down to the fundamentals, then Ember just slightly, slightly, slightly are better in my regard. So with that said, what do you guys think if you had to compare the two, and do um, you think it was unfair to Darmanitan, and if so, of course, write it down below, guys, and I'll definitely read it. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you want to see another matchup coming up, make sure to, of course, suggest it down below. I'll take, I actually consider most of these that you suggest to me, because it's really fun comparing Pokemon, which of course, similar kind of offensive and defensive capabilities. So with that said guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.